What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. The market popped today. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ broke all-time highs, and we saw a lot of positive upwards movement from a bunch of different stocks today. In today's video, we're going to cover the best plays for the rest of this week and the most important news for the stock market right now. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day. But Tom, fill us in. What happened today? Yeah, there was actually some really explosive movement that went on in the markets. Like you said, the QQQ broke its all-time high along with the S&P 500. And, you know, there wasn't too much big news that came out that would necessarily make the market fly up. But, you know, Bitcoin flew up today. Uh, it was up above 50,000 today at open. It did actually start to pull back a little bit here, as we can see. But the, bit, the, the big thing is that it was up overall. And it's really nice to see the, the NASDAQ closing as high as it did. A lot of tech stocks were up today. We saw lots of stocks that have been falling lately, kind of rising too, like BLNK, CHPT, and a few of these other like lower price growth stocks that are doing pretty well. And, and Kathy Woods' ARKK Innovation ETF did very well today, also up 3.18%. And she honestly holds a lot of these stocks that did really well today. And it's just nice to see in crude oil, even popped 5% probably with all this Afghanistan news to kind of boost up the markets also. Gotcha. So, you know, it's awesome to see these growth stocks pop back up, like you're saying. And then, of course, to see the markets booming, it's always great. But, you know, there's a lot of wild things going on in the market right now, whether it be, you know, China and Taiwan or the Fed's tapering or even what's going on in Afghanistan right now. And I saw some pretty interesting news um, like um, related to this Afghanistan situation. Uh, what's going on there? Yeah, they're actually going to, they, they're drawing a red line in the sand. Apparently, we're trying to evacuate people still out of Afghanistan. Of course, it says that we already evacuated 37,000 people, according to CNBC. But this red line, apparently, uh, they're going to have a deadline of August 31st. And after that, apparently, the Taliban might have some like retaliation if we're still sending aircraft into the country and stuff like that, of course. So it could get pretty hectic, more towards that deadline. But Biden did talk about that he might talk about like extending the deadline, but the Taliban spokesman actually came out and told Sky News Group that they will not accept that extension. So it's getting pretty, uh, pretty scary over there. You know, if, if something weird happens or like they shoot down a U.S. plane or, you know, some U.S. soldiers end up getting hurt or something. I mean, we could definitely see some retaliation. But the, the big thing is, is that it's just it's really affecting the market right now. The VIX popped kind of at the end of the day today. It, it really affected the VIX a few days ago when it started to really pop up. And I think it's also really affecting the crude oil market. We can see crude pop 5%. And usually this type of news makes crude oil just start to fly up. Like if we go look at crude oil on a max weekly chart, let's go look at like the early 2000s, then 2008, how crude oil started really flying up as we were, you know, entering Iraq and kind of really getting into those Middle East wars. It's interesting, you know, like I said, all these crazy catalysts are happening, yet the market just booms up and breaks, you know, all time highs. So very crazy. Um, Tom, fill us in on these China stocks. Like I know this morning, especially with Alibaba, uh, they were selling off pretty hard, but it looks like they reversed. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good move back to the upside. And I don't know if Baba just hit off of support or what, but they did have a lot of buyers come in. Now, I initially thought that Baba might have continued down today, which they initially did add open and they ended up breaking that low of Friday, which honestly seemed pretty bad. But like you said, it hit a low down there and it ended up recovering right back up. And there's not too much big news that came out today with China or anything, but it's just uh, the, the biggest problem right now is just like China's having a lot of stuff go on with Taiwan and of course the Chinese uh, government. There's been a lot of like data coming out suggesting like higher inflation over there even and stuff. So it's been uh, just not good overall for the Chinese stocks. And honestly, just look for another pop up because they've been going down so drastically that, you know, even if it's just for like a couple of days, I think that we could end up seeing some green movement here. All righty. So let's get right into these momentum plays. With the first momentum play, we have BLNK to the upside, Tom. You know, BLNK and CHPT had some pretty solid movement today. Yeah, they did. And you know, there's a, that infrastructure bill might be coming up pretty soon, but go ahead and make BLNK break out above 3250. Sounds good. And with the next one, we have Enphase to the upside. Yeah, another growth stock that had a great day again. Make them break out above 173. 
All right, and then with the last one, we have Penn, P-E-N-N, also to the upside. Yeah, and these guys were looking really good around that 65 support. Make them break out above $70.50. Sounds great. So we are watching these three plays for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they break above the levels Tom listed. But now we have to shout out our member of the day, which is the Mac. So huge shout out, the Mac. Uh, you're always commenting on YouTube. And Tom and I just want to say thank you so much for the comments. They really help us grow the channel. So huge shout out to you. But Tom, it is now time for the unusual options activity for this Friday. We are looking at the Pfizer 51 strike calls that expire this Friday, August 27th. And there was around $6.1 million put into this play. And I would say that the smart money is shorting these calls, you know, given that they're a little over a dollar out of the money at this point and their weeklies. You know, I think that the most likely situation here is like a covered call or something like that. Yeah, that's what I would say as well. And they do expire this week, which is pretty scary. But there was some pretty good news that came out today. The FDA actually granted full approval of Pfizer and BioNTech's COVID shots, which is a pretty good, pretty good news for them. And up until now, it says that the vaccines were on the U.S. market under an Emergency Use Authorization Act. So that's an interesting thing to see. And I'm glad the news came out with that. So I don't know, they could be longing it with that news coming out. But it looks like that news didn't really help them go up. And with it being like lower highs, I would agree. You know, that has to be some type of short going on. Yep. And then if we take a look at like BNTX, you know, bio and tech, uh, they had a pretty good day as well. They're up like almost 10% and Moderna was up around 8%. So one thing I just wanted to point out is, you know, if we specifically look at Pfizer's daily chart, you know, you could see back in like December of 2020, it was really popping up and it was kind of like a buy the rumor, sell the news type event um, in December of 2020. So I just want to bring that up here because, you know, even though Pfizer is a solid company, they should be good for the long term. And even though they have good news, that doesn't mean to just like YOLO into like, you know, some call options that expire this week. Like, you know, keep in mind that this stock has a very high float. So it's, it's hard to see moves like this. And then also like, you know, a, a move from $40 up to 50 in just like a month or so, that's a pretty big move for a company like Pfizer. Yeah, it really is. And I honestly could expect a little bit of a pullback, especially with it being those lower highs and everything. And I really like how you pointed out how Moderna and some of those other vaccine stocks did a lot better today than Pfizer. Like Moderna actually closed at their highs and rose like 7.5%. And they actually look pretty decent here on the daily while Pfizer actually is like more towards the top. Exactly. And then let's get right into the comments from the previous episode. With the first comment, we have Humboldt saying thoughts on AQST. So let's take a look. AQST, this one's up like three and a half percent. We don't really trade penny stocks too much. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. It's kind of holding its ground right at like $3.50. But, you know, this max weekly chart just looks brutal, you know, uh, lower and lower highs. So it's not horrible. It's just really not a play for me. Yeah, me either. And it, it doesn't look too bad, though. Like, it looks like it bounced around that $3 support a little bit. And like, it's trying to come up. But like you said, just not the stock for me. It's going to be really risky. And it's going to have a lot of uh, up and down movement. Keep in mind, like, you might buy it. And you might have to hold through some big percentage gains or losses, you know, if you're holding it for the long term. All right. Then we have Patel saying thoughts on Zillow stock comeback. So uh, Z's not looking bad at all. I really like Redfin and then uh, Redfin and Zillow move in a pretty similar way, but I, I really like them. I think shares would be ideal, but it's nice to see that IV is low right now. So it's might not even be bad for some leaps. Yeah, and they're coming back up on the daily chart pretty nicely. Like Redfin here is starting to really turn up. And I love the way they close today up there around those highs. And that's just awesome to see. They just have a lot of strength. And I could really see them going up for the next like few weeks, possibly. Now, that doesn't mean they're just going to have like three weeks of straight upwards movement by any means. But I could see it being higher than where it is now in about three weeks. All right. And then we have Blue saying, how can the market be close to all-time highs in every stock I see, airlines, cruise lines, and tech are down and uh, taking a beat up. So 
Um, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It kind of seemed that way a lot last week, but we had a pretty solid day today. Like NVIDIA was up like five and a half percent. AMD's up four percent. Even Tesla had a nice run. And a lot of these stocks really popped up today, which was great to see. But I definitely know what you mean. And uh, we're definitely in for a wild week ahead. Uh, and then with the next comment, we have Max saying, uh, Zoom to $310 and then a bounce back up. May even go up screaming on any shutdown or, or uh, variant news. I like Zoom for the long haul. So do I. I really like it for the long term. And it's been struggling a decent amount over like the past two to three weeks. Yeah, it has. And I hope that it goes up before hitting that 310 support again, because that would not be uh, good to see him keep going down to there for the next couple of weeks. But I think it could end up turning up right here. You know, a lot of growth stocks are going up. I think it just depends on that whole sector. Like, obviously, if the whole market starts to tank off with this Afghanistan news or something, then I think it might end up being bad for all stocks. But hopefully uh, the market just keeps moving like it did today and just keeps showing the strength that, you know, we've been seeing out of it for like the past few months. And I really like how the growth stocks have been moving lately. So hopefully Zoom can kind of get back up there. And, you know, a lot of these growth stocks had a lot better days than Zoom had only being up 1%, which makes me feel like they could end up falling down a little bit more, especially with that resistance at 400. But I really like them for the long term. And hopefully the growth stocks continue to go up over the next week. There we go. So guys, don't forget, if you want to trade with Tom, myself, and our bots every single day, click that first link in the description down below. You can cancel at any time. We have daily options, swing trades, day trades, a bunch of different custom bots. And you can talk with Tom and myself all day long in the Discord. Uh, like I said, you can cancel at any time. You get daily plays sent to you. Definitely check it out. Um, it's that first link in the description down below. But Tom, do you have like any last minute stocks, options, or anything you're watching heading into tomorrow? You know, I'm still keeping my eyes on crude oil, which is having a great day up 5.2%. We might see a continuation out of that. I think it would be really interesting. And then I, I'm also keeping my eyes on a stock called ASTR Astra Space. You know, this reminds me of SPCE in a way. They have a launch coming up at the end of this week on Friday. So really have your eyes out for this one. I think we might see a little bit of like a pre like a pre-event run up here uh, into this launch. And it looks like ASTR had a pretty good day today, up 9.9%, almost 10% at the closing price, definitely higher than that at the high of day, but overall looks pretty solid. And who knows, you know, they're carrying a Space Force satellite on this launch. So hopefully it goes well. And I think that this could end up running up this week into the launch. I don't really recommend holding through the launch just because anything crazy can happen, but we'll definitely be covering this one as the news kind of approaches this week. Good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked our content, don't forget to subscribe. A lot of you guys aren't. So definitely don't forget, we post brand new videos every single day. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. And then don't forget to join Tom and I live every single day at Market Open on the Stocked Up Live YouTube channel. We go live every single day at Market Open on that channel. Feel free to join us. Other than that, Thanks for watching.